This book, Tomer Devora, Rav Moshe Kodavir wrote, it's based on two things, two major things. One is understanding the 13 principles of kindness, 13 midas arachamim, which are the 13 uh, parts of Ari Champion's beard, of Keser. Keser, Keser had the sphere, the high sphere has 13 different parts of his beard that draw down light and kindness into the lower spheres, particularly into Zerampin. Into the low, the Zerampin is the one that controls the world. And Zerampin, when Zerampin is not perfected, then all sorts of bad things come to the world, punishment and other hard things come to come happen to us. When Arichampin, and, and the minimization of spirituality and other things like that. And that's because people sin, so they the sins cause Zerampin to be in a state of small-mindedness and of difficulty of dinim, of gvuros, of harshness. What Ari Champin does, one of his major, major, major uh, actions in the world that we understand, is that he he fixes those judgments of Zerampin through, mostly, usually through the beard. And there are a number of different, there are other things that he does, other ways, but the 13 uh, principles, the 13 principles of the Torah that the Torah has learned out from is also the, uh, associated with the beard. And... Um, the 13 principles of kindness, 13 midas arachanim, that we say. So we say this in, 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 in davening, in prayer, and we say it, kel rachum v'chanon, erach ha'paim v'rav chesed v'emes. These are Hashem Hashem. And he goes through each one of these 13, and he explains what they are, because in when we, when we daven, even if you know what it means, you just know the words. But if you, Rav Moshe Kodavar explains how each one of them is a different type of of mitigation of of judgment of judgment and harshness, and it's very important to understand you know what type of what type of what type of mitigation of harshness you need. Sometimes you need the harshness to be pushed off for a little bit of time. Sometimes you need the harshness to be uh, to be gotten rid of completely. Sometimes you need the harshness to you know different types of things. So that's that's thirteen different types of harshness, and we're gonna we could learn about that. We'll learn about the second one in the one that you opened up in the book, no se ava, and that's uh, after that, the Toma Devar goes into the ten spheres and he explains how a person, through action, can connect to each of the ten spheres to uh, to serve Hashem and to perfect himself in a way that will automatically associate himself with the ten spheres and draw upon himself the power of that sphere. For example, if a person attaches himself to the sphere of Chesed by doing kindness, then he actually attaches himself to the sphere of chesed by doing kind, by doing the kindness. And the sphere of chesed, so to speak, shines on him and gives him kindness. And same thing with power, gvura, strength. Same thing with, with, uh, with life. And same thing with all the different things. But here it teaches you, there's one way to do it just by the way you understand. Like you understand that chesed is kindness. But another way to do it is, more, impor- more importantly and most importantly often, is the mitzvah itself. There's often mitzvahs that are associated with the different spheres and with the different, um, we're going to see the different uh, the thirteen principles. Okay, so let's let's do the second principle here. It's actually the second page. Yeah. Okay, the second page is uh, is the second one. It's called Nose Avon. It really it literally means carrying sin. That Hashem, so to speak, we call him the carrier of sin. That he carries our sins. What does that mean? This one is greater than the previous, the previous uh, of the 13, 13 methods of kindness. Um, we didn't learn the first one. I'm not exactly sure. So I think the first one is when he actually, he continues to support, the first one, which we didn't, we're not learning right now, is when he continues to support mankind and people, even though they sin. Meaning, the moment they sin, then it should be appropriate for Hashem to stop giving us life and stop. Why is he giving us it while, while we're sinning? I'm pretty sure that's the first one. Okay, so the second one, he said, is bigger than the first one. And this is, Now, when a person sins, there's no such sin that does not create an evil angel or a destroyer of some sort, a spiritual entity that does bad things. Kedetanan, as it says in it says, If a person sins in, with a certain sin, He buys for himself a negative angel, a prosecuting angel. 
Very also Katigor Omer Lifnei Kadosh Baruch. When this prosecuting angel stands in front of Hashem, if Omer Ploni Asani, and he says, "This guy uh, made me," he says, "Yaakov made me." He goes to to, to Hashem, and he said, "Look at this." Vani Bria Miskemes Baol, Vain Bria Miskemes Baolam El Beshafa, and there's no creation in this world that lives without the Shefa of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Vehari Hamashchis. And this mashchis, this destroying angel, is standing in front of Hashem. Vibama miskayim, and how is he? Uh, how does this destroying angel? How does he live? What does he? What, what life to power does he get? Vadinosen sheyomar kodesh baruch when the ju- judgment should dictate that Hashem should say like this: Eni zan mashchisa, I'm not going to support your mashchis or his mashchis, the destroying angel that was created by Yaakov. Yaakov sinned. He should go to the. Uh, he should tell the the Hashem should tell the Mashchis, the destroyer. You go to the one who created you, and he'll create. He'll sustain you. And then what would the what would the destroying angel do? Would go down and take the the soul of the one who created him. O korso o nenashalav kafi oncho anchis bato hamashchisaho. Or the angel, how does see how do these bad angels? How do they get their energy? They get their energy from actually hurting, or destroying here in this world. That gives them an, in some way associated with the one who created. So if Yaakov creates an angel by sinning, this angel uh, has like a sucking power, and he has a certain amount of sucking power. Kind of you could imagine like a bottle, a glass bottle, a va- with a vacuum inside, and it wants to suck at suck in a certain amount of air inside this bottle. Now. It'll, the, the power of, its, of the bottle's power to suck is only going to last as long as there's no air inside, or as long as there's not enough air inside. But once it filled itself up with air, it has no more power to suck. These evil angels are like that too. They have the power to attack, and that actually gives them, that's their energy force, and that's what gives them life, it gives them interest in living, so to speak. And when they attack, they use up some of that energy, use up some of that life force, or they, in a sense, they, they suck out a certain type of life force. But when they finish sucking out, when they finish utilizing all their damaging, uh, you know, and, uh, interest and power, then they cease to exist. So he's really saying that Hashem should say to the angel, I don't want to support you. You go get your own, get your life force from the one who created you. Go down to this world, suck either the actual life force out of the person himself, which would kill him, and that would be, uh, you know, this destroying angel would also be, be like nullified at the same time, would destroy himself at the same time. But that's okay, because that's how he's created. He's like this vacuum that his life force actually comes from sucking out some type of punishment and some type of energy from the person. That's why when people sin, they lose spiritual energy. And one of the, um, one of the ideas is that, that this evil... Uh, destroying angel comes and sucks out a person's energy from him, and that's why a person loses out on this um, when when he sins. That's one of the uh, one of the major reasons for not sinning. And if it doesn't happen here in this world, meaning some 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 evil angels are are only going to basically suck out and punish a person when they die for certain reasons. We're going to see some are going to do also here in this world. Some are going to do only physical things. Some are going to do only spiritual things. It depends on the sin, it depends on the intention, it depends on the the time and place. And Hashem's Hashem has many reasons for why, and there's general rules for you know for how this how this works. Okay, Ve'ina Kadosh Baruch Hu Hashem does not act like this. Hashem doesn't just say to the destroying angel, go and I'm not going to help, I'm not going to support you at all, I'm not going to give you any of any power to live. You just take everything you need from the crea- your creator, which is a human. Let's call him Yaakov. Ela, no se v'sovel ha'avon. Hashem, uh, so to speak, takes care of, he carries and he takes upon himself the sin meaning the, the, the creation of the evil angel that, ha, that was created by the man. And just like he supports the whole world, he supports this destroying angel also. Until one of three things happens. So he doesn't say to the angel, I'm not going to even let you exist, and you have to take all of your existence power from the human who created you. What he does is he says to the destroying, the evil angel, he says, you know, I'm going to keep you around for one of three reasons. And one of three, and these are the three reasons that he might keep the destroying angel around. Either the sinner might be might repent, 
ויחלהו ויבטלהו בסי גופיו. And he will destroy, this, the, the one who does tshuva, the one who repents, will destroy and nullify the evil angel through fasting or through doing all sorts of different, um, different things, meaning he takes upon himself some type of difficulty. It could be uh, an extra hour of learning. It could be some type of... Um, um, some type of thing which is uncomfortable for him, kind of to atone for the comfort or enjoyment he might have taken from the pleasure, from the, the pleasure he took from the sin. So it is some type of thing that a person has to do to a suffering of a certain sort, which could be self-inflicted. It's not suggested in general nowadays that we do self-inflicting suffering because we're generally physically very weak and fasting usually weakens people and it's better for them to, to do other things. Although if a person finds that fasting is good, it, it could be a good way to, to take care of their things. The best would be something that, that they know they have to do or they know that's good for them and they should work hard at doing it. Let's say saying all of Tehillim or, or learning an extra 15 minutes a day or something. And, and they, they should be most in efforts. They should do it with, even if it's difficult. So that would be also like a, sivu, a siguf, a, a suffering that would actually nullify the evil angel. Because as long as a person suffers, if a person takes on a certain amount of suffering for himself, then that suffering counteracts the pleasure he took that created the angel. Because, and, and that angel, therefore, will be nullified with in, incorporation, with tshuva at the same time, meaning acceptance never to do it again. Or it could be another one of the three reasons. The second reason is that a judge could punish a person and he could punish them either with lashes or with, with death. This is talking about the time when the Bisa Migdash was, a, was, a, was around the temple where these types of punishments were, were given out by the rabbis. Nowadays, we don't have that anymore. So I don't think that this is, uh, this is, what, this is, this is applicable today unless it's some type of, unless it also could be referring to a fact that if a person does tshuva, but he didn't do infliction, he didn't do self-infliction, what happens? A person, when he gets some type of infliction, it, those, either Hashem directs certain type of infliction in, on him in order to, to nullify the pleasure that he got from the sin, or if a person gets an affliction, a person could have intention to be very happy with the infliction that Hashem give him. Let's say he falls and he stubs it and he scratches his elbow and he gets blood. So then he's, he's very sad about that, but he could be very happy. And if he says, you know what, I realize that this is coming to purify me from sin, Therefore, I'm happy with this, and uh, and I'm going to uh, and that I'm accepting the suffering with happiness. That also is a it's as if I as if I brought the suffering upon myself, and that destroys the evil angels. Um, a third the third way that the third reason that Hashem is waiting for people to that sustains the angel in order for people to possibly get their punishment in Gehenna. Sometimes a person is doing too many good things here in this world and Hashem doesn't want to punish him here for whatever reason or the opposite. Hashem, this is not, I guess this wouldn't, uh, you know, it seems like sometimes if a person were to get all of his punishment here in this world, he might not be able to handle it. Let's say, for example, a person needs a nice house and a comfort, comfortable car. And that's what he needs in order to serve Hashem. When he drives to work, he listens to Torah tapes and he learns uh, Kabbalistic uh, ideas that's going to help him and his life in general. So he needs this car with a nice stereo system where everything, all of his MP3s are just there and everything works. If Hashem were to punish him and this evil angel, let's say, that he created with his sin would be one that would take away his finances and now he doesn't have money to have his car, then he would be in big trouble. How would he be able to serve, how would he be able to serve Hashem in mitzvahs? He would fall very quickly from, from anything. And therefore, what Hashem sometimes does is he waits. And he says, you know what? This guy's not going to get it here. He'll get it in the next world. Usually, physically, it's always better to get it here. Meaning the amount of suffering you're going to suffer in this world is nothing compared to the amount of suffering in one, for one minute of Gehenna. But at the same time, um, sometimes it just doesn't work out. And it's just better to live a more comfortable life here and do good deeds and do good things. And then when you go to the next world, so you pay for your bad deeds. You'll pay there for your bad deeds. You don't get it for free. But at the same time, you also did more good deeds because you had the life that you needed to live. So Hashem, Hashem makes all these calculations for a person. And sometimes it's a big kindness that he waits till, till, till a person dies to punish him. Sometimes it isn't. 
uh, for very many wicked people, what Hashem does is He gives them a very comfortable life here in this world in order to punish him completely in the world to come, because if he punished him here in this world, like, it wouldn't be worth it for him. He, would re he really wants to punish These people really need to get big punishments, so what he does, he waits till the next world. The next world, he gives it on his head, like he gives it completely. So, Hainush uh, Kain, and this is what Kain said, Godol Avoni Minaso. Kain, after he killed Hevel, he killed his brother, he said, my sin is too great to carry. And the rabbi of Epir was out, and the rabbis explained, Kol ha'olam kulo atasofa. What Kain said to Hashem was, look, you're, you're supporting the whole world. Meaning, zan umafarnas, you are sustaining the whole world. Vavoni kavid, she'ina ata yochol And he says, my sin is so is very big, you can't take that also? Come on, you're supporting the whole world. Can't you just take one more evil angel? Like, <laughs> you, already, you already have so much on your plate. Just do this little favor for me and hold this one, this one angel. Perish lefarnaso, ad she'ashuv ve'etaken. Meaning, what he was saying to Hashem is, listen, just hold out. Don't punish me now. What, you take care of this evil angel. You support him. Give him some life force while I'm I'm still working on my tshuva, and then once I do tshuva, then I'll be able to fix it completely, and then the angel will be gone completely. Because sometimes tshuva, proper tshuva, takes time; it doesn't happen immediately. So that's uh, that's what Kain said to Hashem, and Hashem um, Hashem answered him. Im Kain, harizu midasavlanus gedola. Therefore, it turns out that this is a tremendous. Um, uh, character trait that Hashem has of kindness and um, savlanus means someone who can patience means patience. So I forgot the the English word. Sheyazun v'yafanes bria ra shabara choyte ad shiyashef. What's the pa what's the amazing patience? Is that he supports an evil angel that was created by man until the person does tshuva. That's, uh, that's tremendous. This is really great because really we could punish, and then we could get out of punishment all the way. A person does sin, and you're never allowed to do sins even with hopes of arousing the second mita of kindness of Hashem. Because sometimes Hashem doesn't use this mita. Sometimes he doesn't use this character trait to, to support the angel. Sometimes what he does is he lets the angel come down right away and kill the person or punish him right away. Sometimes there is such a thing. Uh, but if he... If, he, if Hashem is kind and does this, then it's very good. And if a person has time, if a person, Hashem, waits for him to do tshuva, to, to do repentance, then it's, the person benefits completely. He doesn't get punished by the, by the sin, and he also gets, you know, repentance with his, uh, you know, with his life the way it is. Okay, so now, from here we have to learn how patient we have to be. Because again, if we want to merit to have Hashem, act to us in a certain way, we also have to have that character trait itself. It doesn't make sense. It's not fair. Hashem didn't create the world in a way that, that he's just going to do all these things for us that are like super kind and super nice and we're just going to be these evil, bad, nasty, you know, nasty people doing bad things all the time. It doesn't work like that. If we have patience with other people and you could say sometimes with Hashem, so to speak, where sometimes you expect that Hashem should give you something or some, do something. You have to have patience. You have to know Hashem is really, you know, Hashem. Obviously, with this this exact character character trait doesn't doesn't work with Hashem. But we have to be understanding of of other people. We're going to see. Lisbol avon chaviro veriaso veraosav shehera ad shiro kaze shadain raso shechata shechata. Now a person has to has to be patient with a person another person's sin if a person sinned against him or did something bad to him until uh, until we're going to see so now a person has to wait this amount of time, the same amount of time that Hashem does it, that even though the evil is still around, let's say a person, is, let's say let's say a person is continually doing something bad to you. What you have to do is you have to be kind and patient so much that even though the bad thing is still there and he didn't stop doing it, 
you wait for him to either fix it himself or until the thing disappears, meaning until the bad thing uh, you know goes away. This is a very a very important uh, important character trait. If we do this, then Hashem in turn says, you know what? You're acting so nicely to my to my my Jewish people in this way, to my uh, you know to your brother, to your friend, to your wife, even to anyone. So I'm going to act to you in the same way. And this is how we arouse upon ourselves this this character trait that Hashem has of patience, where He actually will support the bad, the bad angel, while it's still alive, in order to to wait for a person to do tshuva and, and fix it. I think this is like this is amazing. You know, this is how this is how we attach ourselves. We will learn in Kabbalah. We learn about the, each part of the beard, and which one, uh, which one, uh, which one this is. I don't remember exactly where it is on the beard, but it's one of the thirteen. Uh, it's brought down the Zohar. They describe each different, all the different parts: the front part of the beard, the back part of the beard, the, the sides that stick out, the mustache over here on the top, the different different parts. Um, and this is one of them. And if we if we want to arouse this character trait upon ourselves, if we if we act in this way, we arouse the character trait upon ourselves. Also, if we practice, if we know the Kabbalistic uh, Yehudim and different things, then we could do them in order to bring upon this character trait upon ourselves, even without special action. It's not a magic trick, but a person has to have some level. Let's say if I use this second character trait of the beard of Kesser, and I, u- and I use it to a certain amount. Now, someone I know that I sinned or I saw this evil angel that I need protection from and I want Hashem to wait for me to do tshuva. So there are Kabbalistic intentions that could help bring about this um, this character trait of Hashem. And that's what really we do every day when we daven and we say Hashem Hashem, Kel Rachum Vachanon, we say it every day, Ashkenazim say it two times a week, that we say we actually arouse these character traits by saying them. So when a person says the thirteen the thirteen principle, the thirteen meters, then he uh, he actually arouses them and Hashem becomes you know becomes more kind in that in this way. It's good. So I have 13 of these, you know, we got to learn all of them. There's 10 spheres. That's what Tomah is all about.